This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Uh, we are going to take a look now at a cosine curve that has four characteristics. All right, let's run through them. Uh, this number that's in front of the cosine curve, we've seen this before. Uh, we're going to use it to calculate amplitude. All right, the uh, value that's in front of the angle, well, believe it or not, everything in the parentheses here is our angle. That's a representation of our angle. So the value that's in front of that is going to help us calculate the period of this curve. Okay, so that's going to help us calculate the period. All right, now what are these other two things? Well, here, right here, this value that's off on its own is uh, going to be able to help us calculate the vertical shift. I'm just going to call it Vs for vertical shift. And then that means this last one over here the one that's inside the parentheses next to our variable, so it's part of our angle, is going to be our, let's get this right, phase shift. There we go. Okay. All right, now let's go and run through all these to figure out how we're going to come up with the four characteristics. All right, well, let's uh, start with amplitude. The absolute value of this 3 is our amplitude. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. Uh, next would be period. So to calculate period, we take, uh, let's see, we're going to take 360, or you could take 2 pi if you're working in radians. I'm just going to stay in degrees. I like working in degrees. And I'm going to divide that by that number that's in front of our angle. So 360 divided by a half, well, if you know anything about fractions, instead of dividing by a half, we can multiply by the reciprocal. So it's 360 times 2 is 720 degrees and that's going to be the period. All right, let's put that in there. 720 degrees. All right, got it. All right, let's move on to uh, phase shift. Okay, phase shift is this value, pi over 4, but you take the opposite of it. So it's going to be negative pi over 4. All right, now if you haven't already noticed, we have our period is in degrees. We have the phase shift is in radians. That's a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert. You're going to multiply this by 180 over pi. Remember that's how we convert from radians to degrees. Uh, we multiply by either pi over 80, or 180 that is, or 180 over pi. Whatever it takes to cancel. And here I'm canceling the pi, so I know I'm doing something right. All right, so you multiply straight across, so that is going to be a negative 180 all over 4. And let's see, that would be negative 45 degrees. Okay, so it's a negative 45. So I'm going to put that down for phase shift. All right, what's next? Vertical shift. Well, the vertical shift is pretty easy. This number all by itself on the right side of our equation tells us exactly what the vert vertical shift is. It's 1. Okay. All right, let's graph it. Now, when we graph this, what we're going to do is graph as if we're just working with our first two characteristics. Now, uh, we're going to go back as if we had a really easy problem to work with. And uh, I'm just going to go and pretend like I had these two characteristics, and I'm going to ignore the other two more complicated characteristics. All right, now if I was going to graph this, uh, I know I'm going to go up to 720. So I'm going to go all the way over here to 720. Uh, and I'm going to divide it up into quartiles. So half of 720 is 360. Half of 360 is 180. Okay, now what's the third quartile? I'm going to add those first two quartiles together. So that would be 540. Okay, so we got 540. So we broke it all up into quartiles, ready to go. Uh, our amplitude is 3. Can't forget about the amplitude, so I'm going to put 3 notches on the y-axis, 3 notches down. So it's going from 3 to negative 3. All right. Now, if I'm graphing cosine, 
it would start, a basic cosine curve that is, would start at our amplitude. And the amplitude is 3. Now I'm going to be very careful here. I'm going to put a little open circle. So that's where it would go if I didn't have these other two more complicated characteristics. So I know this is not the final graph, so that's why I'm keeping it in an open circle. All right, now the way this works, if you remember the way cosine goes, it goes from the amplitude to the x-axis, and then the second quartile goes down to our minimum, to the next quartile back to the x-axis, and then our last quartile back to our maximum. There you have it. We have those curves. So uh, our points, that is, and we could connect those points with dots, and I'm, I'm making this extremely light, so this may not come out very well, but I'm kind of following along here with the cursor, and you can see what the curve would look like if it was basic. All right, now let's take into consideration, however, that there's more to it. There is this uh, phase shift and this uh, vertical shift, so we're going to take that into consideration. All right, now phase shift means left or right movement. Since it's negative, I know that I'm going to take all the points that I just created and I'm going to move them all 45 degrees to the left because it's negative. All right, now vertical shift means you're moving things up and down. Since it's positive, we're going to move all the points one unit up. All right, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do two of these, both of these moves here together. Each one of these points goes 45 degrees to the left and one unit up. Okay, so i got to keep that in mind. I'm going to go one unit up, so I'm going to put one more notch on here. So it looks like the maximum I'm going to get to is going to be 4. All right. Now, just to get a feel for where 45 degrees is, uh, halfway here, that's this is about where 90 is. So this distance is 90 degrees, about half that. So very little believe it or not, there's just a slight little nudge um, to the left uh, is what we're going to do. So I'm going to take this point and move it a little nudge to the left and I'm going to go one unit up. And there you go. That's my new point. So every point gets nudged to the left, one unit up. Okay, so that point gets nudged to the left, one unit up. This point gets nudged left, one unit up. This point over here gets a nudge left, one unit up. So you can see each point was just kind of moved diagonally to the left, up. All right, now we are going to connect these points, and that will be co completing my curve. Now I'm going to try to do this with dashes here to get a feel for what it's going to look like. So that's what it's going to look like. So hopefully my uh, penmanship will allow me to do that. So I'm going to connect those dots. Eh, not a bad job. So there you go. Uh, I've got my cosine curve. It looks like it's all written out there. Now, some teachers want to know where this beginning point is. And then they want to know where the end point is. We call that as part of the interval. So let's see. This point right here where it all begins... Uh, let's see, I could put it over here. It looks like it was going to be a negative 45, comma, 4. Okay, and then this point over here all the way to the right, our end point, our right end point, uh, let's see, that would have been 720 minus 45. I might want to do the work here to be accurate. Minus 45. So let's see, what is that? I didn't uh, do this ahead of time, so I will have to do this on the fly. So is that 7? 675. Okay, so it's going to be at 675, comma, was one unit up, so it'll be at 4. So I'm thinking it through, just like a student would have to think it through. All right. So there you have it. So what's the interval for this curve? Um, well, for the curve that I just drew, it started at an x value or an angle value of negative 45 degrees, 
and it ended at 675 degrees. So that is the interval that I have graphed. Think of it as the domain values of the interval. It goes from negative 45 to 675 on the x-axis. Um, yep, the curve does repeat infinitely. Um, it is not restricted to these values. That's just the values that I, ha that I have shown here. Um, this curve would start at any point and then move 720 degrees left or right, and then you would have one chunk of the curve that would repeat itself over and over again. Um, this is just the interval that I have graphed and trying to make that very explicit so we understand how these curves work. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Uh, check out our interactive uh, quizzes, all our lessons, videos, activities. Take care.